In this session, I want to talk about the tragedy of the commons archetype, a situation that happens when two or more um, activities depend for their success on, on some limited resource. The situation or the structure begins with, as I said, two activities which produce results which promotes more of the same activity. So there are two reinforcing structures that initiate the structure, though nothing comes for nothing. I mean, there's a, there's a cost associated with, with growth so that both B results and, and A results, the activity that produces them is dependent upon um, a resource of some sort. Though the difficulty that arises is that the activity by A and A and B over time essentially depletes the resource or runs into a resource limit. Think back to the limits to the limit to growth archetype that we talked about before, where things are fine until it gets to a point where the the demand on the resources is essentially essentially such that it depletes the resource. Now, when we implement this structure as a simulation, it gets a little bit more convoluted in that I've taken a resource and I've added a, a replenishment flow and a rate so that I can actually cause the resource to, to be replenished over time. And this is the resource limit of minimum resources. So that the A result and B result are dependent upon A and B activity, and they're both reinforcing structures. And I've added a factor, A and B, to govern the extent to which that activity, the, the strength or the rate at which the reinforcing structure actually grows. If I go ahead and, and run this with with some initial values so that A and B are starting in the same place, though the the factors are the same and, and the replenishment rate is zero and, and there's no minimum resources, you notice that the available resources, which starts at 50, actually goes to zero quite quickly as the resources available um, are consumed and the results simply plateau and when the resources are gone there are no more results. And you notice here that the activity of A and B you don't see both of them because they're actually laying right on top of each other. If we go ahead and alter this slightly so that we start A and B in different places you notice that that they started in different places so B simply grows faster than A, but you end up in the same place with all of the resources being depleted. A, a alternative is to say, okay, A and B start in different places, though the resources are replenished at a certain rate. What that does is simply sort of delays the inevitable for some period of time because the the replenishment of the resources is actually feeding two reinforcing structures so that no matter how much you replenish the resources sooner or later, the, the exponential growth of the reinforcing structure is simply going to consume all of the, the resources available. Now you can go ahead and say, I want to go ahead and, and keep a minimum of resources and have a replenishment rate, what that then says is, well, we don't actually deplete all of the resources to zero so that there is some growth that continues over time, but it's limited to the actual replenishment rate. In other words, the, the growth of A and B or the results that they produce is, is essentially directly dependent upon the resource rate there is a replenishment rate for the resources. So whatever resources are replenished, they're immediately consumed. So in terms of the strategy for the structure, there's only a couple that make sense. Either those parties involved can collaboratively decide to manage the resources available, 
or they can have someone else manage the resources. Because if they're not managed, the activity of the reinforcing structure will simply consume all of the resources. They and it will end up to where one one of the resources probably gets ahead of the other one and you end up with a an all for one and none for all scenario where whatever resources are replenished are immediately taken by one resource and the other resources don't get any. So it's simply a, a non-viable option. The other alternative is it's simply a race to the bottom. And when all of the res if the resources aren't replenished, when they're gone, they're gone and and there there is no more result. I mean consider what's happening with oil consumption. Um, we're consuming it uh, uh, more and more rapidly year after year, and the replenishment rate is on the order of millions of years. So the time will come when it will be gone, and and then what? So um, I would encourage you to access this structure and interact with the various options to change the starting place for A and B and the resource available the factors which control the the activity rate or the reinforcing loop growth rate for A and B, the replenishment rate and the, and the minimum resources, and, and two multiple simulations until you, until you begin to get a sense of how the, the varying factors influence the structure itself so that you, you know, you're, as you work with an archetype and interact with it, your intuition sort of develops as to what you sense is likely to happen. I've, pre pre I've presented or offered a couple of actual cases in the external resources. This one is simply um, a situation where there are multiple organs, multiple departments in an organization who consume MIS resources. The IT department, the IT department is typically in a no-win scenario. If the organization's success depends upon using IT resources and they don't have to pay for them, there is the organization will consume all of the IT resources somebody can figure out how to find. And, and you know, it's, a, it's I said, it's a no-win scenario. Somebody simply has to manage the availability of the resources because there are only so many of them. And this one is, um, when fair is unfair, the two children in the same family who are involved in sports, and as their success develops, they need more resources to support their further success. And if one of them begins to to get ahead of the other one, um, they'll simply begin to develop faster and consume more of the resources, which will end up shorting the other one. Um, and it appears to be unfair so the question is how are the the resources budgeted and does that budgeting actually diminish the uh, future success possibilities of one or the other so um, take a look hope you find this piece of content on tragedy of commons informative and i'll see you in the next video bye